Rising Up a Minute. I'm your host, John Dow. My co-host, Dr. Burt Pope Matthews, is under the weather, so we're going to wish her a speedy recovery. I have with me this evening Mr. James Blue Curry, oh, yeah. an accomplished musician and performer. Mr. Curry, good to see you again. Right, Thanks for here. joining us. Good to be here. Good to be here. How things yeah. going? Things are going great, man. I'm, uh, I'm really having a good time with what I'm doing now. I've uh, managed to um, do singing for a living, mm -hmm. you know, and music for a living now, and, and that's... You know, it's 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 good. That's the only thing I can say. It's, it's good. <laughs> uh, we're going to get into the music part a little bit, but when we were talking, you said that your passion, the the reason you do music now is kind of to reach out to other folk and, and a, a specific group in particular. Tell us about that group. That group is our, our senior citizens. Um, our senior citizens, um, they're in um, their residence and homes that um, people don't visit them a lot and I try to take the music to them you'd be surprised that they can they can't remember what they had for breakfast but when I come in to sing for them the music it just brings them back you know and I try to perform their kind of music um, what they might have heard in the, in the 40s and the 50s and stuff like that you know so it, it brings them back um, it's, it's really a pleasure to do it um, the music that that I did do one time back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's really not um, their kind of music right now. I've um, I've discovered another kind of music, and when I say that, growing up we didn't listen to like the Dean Martins and the Frank Sinatra's yeah. and stuff like sure. that, you know. And I found out that's really good music, you know. So it you know just depends on your preference, you know. What made you want to? reach out to the nursing homes and assisted living facilities? Well, I used to do that um, after I went into the military back in the 80s. Okay. Um, I used to do that, um, you know, on the side. Okay. And the people, they enjoyed it. Then my, myself and my daughter, we used to go in and, you know, we would go in and sing a few songs for them and they would be more grateful, it seems, that then you know, doing these big concerts and the people screaming and yelling and everything, you know, at the big concerts. So we, we um, now, you know, I just kind of brought it back and I go in and like I said, they're more appreciative, it seems, than going to the club or going to that. Not, not that I really go to the club anymore because I don't really, <laughs> <laughs> don't really frequent the club at all, <laughs> you know. But um, that's their club. Mm -hmm. And we have a good time with them, you know. So we started to do, again, do it again. My wife and I started to do it again um, just to give back. You nice. Know? Nice. So, you know, the music and the, the people that I've um, sung around with for years and uh, open for the what they say, the big names and stuff like that. So I just bring the same thing to them, and they, they love it. Uh, which branch of service? I was uh, in the Air Force. Oh, nice. My father's retired Air Force. Oh, yeah, well, well, well before you, obviously. I right. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. How many years? I did 12 years. Oh, nice. Yes. Good time? Wonderful time. Good. Wonderful Good. time. So you were active duty while you were actually performing on the side from time to time? Uh, in the, um, I did um, like six years active okay. and then did six years reserve. So on the active side while I was um, serving. I would go into the senior homes and, and so do none of your former commanders say, "Hey, we need you in the band, or we need you in the in this particular <laughs> choir." <laughs> well, I was uh, I was in food service okay. in the in the Air Force, okay. and the way I did the food I didn't have time to do any music, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, except on the side when I was okay. able to do it for them because. With the commanders, and you know, they what they were doing, they would get me for the food more uh -huh. so than for the music, you know. So I could cook you a homemade roll right now. That, uh -huh. I, yeah. <laughs> and I understand your wife is a vet as well. My wife is a, a army vet. Okay. Yeah, she's retired army. Oh, nice, you know, nice. So, yeah, nice. So it, it it all it all goes together there. You know, we have a good time at home. You know, with that. <laughs> uh, when we were talking uh, before the show, you said that you and your wife have a special affinity for people with Alzheimer's and dementia? Well, my mother, um, my mother, my mother was diagnosed with uh, 
dementia and early onset Alzheimer's mm. before she before she passed. And um, it's a really it's a really debilitating disease. It um, to watch the deterioration. Yeah, it's, it's not the, pleasant. It's, it's not pleasant at all. You know, um, thanks be it to God, she didn't suffer long with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we started to notice it when she started to um, ask questions, and maybe five minutes later, she asked the same question. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know it. it it affects everybody kind of different, you know. So dementia, um, dementia is just kind of the umbrella for Alzheimer's. Okay. You know, um, you have um, uh, the the statistics said. Um, I think you have 15 million people a year diagnosed mm. with with uh, dementia, right? And you have one person with Alzheimer's every 60 seconds. You know, so it's kind of, it's something because um, it's all in, believe it or not, in the stuff that you eat. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, all of that has a lot to do with it, you know. So, um, she's okay now, mm -hmm. you know. Thanks be to God, she's okay. But um, dementia, you know, I, I would like to say to people, you know, uh, it does give signs. Okay. And, you know, some of those signs are, you know, re re repetitive stuff that, you know, the person may do that, um, and, and then sometimes they forget stuff that you know they know how to do, you know, but they may ask how to do it, you know, over and over again sometimes. So that's kind of early onset, mm -hmm. you know, and where it goes from there, a lot of times it's just, it's just straight down the hill, you know. You know, it's interesting. You you mentioned one person every sixty seconds. I don't know if you're a sports fan or not, but Pat Summit, mm -hmm. the former women's basketball coach of was it Vanderbilt or Tennessee? I read it. Pat Summit coach Vanderbilt or Tennessee? Tennessee, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, she just won a ton of games. Like she's up there with the men as far as an amount of wins. Mm -hmm. She stepped down because she was diagnosed. I can't they said dementia or Alzheimer's, but I know within six months she passed away. Now, because we aren't, you know, in Tennessee and close to you wonder how long, you know, had you know, had this started to affect her. We you mm -hmm. know, we just said, Okay, Pat Summit stepped down mm -hmm. because of this, but you like you said, it you forget how to do things, and then all of a sudden, that person is just yeah. a shell of themselves. You know, from uh, Dean Smith, mm -hmm. you know, former basketball coach at UNC, same thing, same thing, same thing. You know, it, and it, it's it's if you don't live with somebody that has it, or if you don't know somebody that has it, you really have no idea. Right. What it's like to deal right. with, to to watch a person not be able to do anything, right, or to repeat themselves, and then you have to get them to eat, or they may not want to eat, or they may not really know what's going on. They, sometimes they even forget how to eat. Yeah, you know, it's something as simple as picking up a spoon, you know, that's that's real major for them. You know, it just depends on how far along they progress. Mm -hmm. You know, but. Um, Mm -hmm. So well, you know that's 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 just how it is, you know. That's that's really all I can say about that. Because when when you go into the nursing homes and you see some of these people that have dementia or Alzheimer's, and like you said, you may sing a a, a Tony Bennett or a Tony Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you said Tony Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you mentioned Sinatra and Dean mm -hmm. Martin and, and mm -hmm. those guys, and the most I remember about Dean Martin were those show, those TV shows he used to be in mm -hmm. with with Frank and, and uh, Sammy Davis and, Sammy Jr. and they, Joey Bishop the and Peter Long. Yeah, that that, yeah. that whole crew. But mm -hmm. you know they were accomplished singers, right? So you said you all sing that, or you all perform one of their songs, mm -hmm. and then their faces just they just light up. They come back. You know, and it's it's amazing because we run into situations where people are 
they may just example they may just sit like this and they said they've been sitting that way for like maybe weeks at a time mm -hmm. you know and we'll come in and we'll sing to them and they will actually get up and dance and oh. you can see the look on the, the the caretaker's face and the directors and everything they're like blown away because that person you know they they've been that away you know for a while and just for the music to bring them back you know for that moment and after it's done they may you know mm -hmm. be that away for a little bit and then they go back to where they were you know but the music brings them back for that second or for that minute you know and maybe it's just that song you know so you never can tell we mix it all up you know we do uh uh dean martin temptations um frankie valley you know it, pretty much anything you know and the country songs mm -hmm. you know and just to see some of them just light up you know and i'm talking about 80 90 year old people that can barely move the wheelchair will get up out of the wheelchair and do the twist and sit back in the wheelchair and they're okay <laughs> you just may have come up with a new form of therapy well for those folks it, well some when we when we go in some call it musical therapy you know and they say it's better than the, the therapy that they get professional mm -hmm. you know musically professional or that's supposed to be musical right. therapists you know um but they just light up we just bring them back and we've been doing this now about Maybe about three years. Okay. Now, when right. you say we, who else? Uh, my wife you? and I. My okay. wife and I. My okay. wife. Um, my wife does the um, the sound for me. Okay. She picks the songs, and okay. a lot of times I, I get up and I, I sing for like an hour each show. Okay. And she just goes through the songs and just kind of fill them out and everything. And I don't know what she's going to play next, you know. So she kind of fills the crowd out. I kind of look the crowd over. And we get back in. We just we just have a good time. So she keeps you on your toes. She it's, keeps it, me on my toes. It's not rehearsed. You really don't know what you're going to do. I really until don't know what I'm there. going to do until I get there. But it Absolutely. keeps you sharp. That's Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And it's fun. She mm -hmm. keeps it fun. She keeps it fun. Who are some of the groups that you opened up for? Oh, wow. And, and, <laughs> as you said, the so-called big name groups. The big groups. name groups. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, um, the Shylites, uh, Pointer Sisters, Betty Wright. Um... I had a lot of fun opening for Chuck Brown. I opened a couple, maybe three times for Chuck Brown before he died. Well, Chuck right. is a lot of fun Chuck, himself. That yeah. that Chuck and that go-go crowd. A guitarist. Ooh, a guitar. A, a, key, a drummer, a guitarist, a keyboardist. Keyboard, vocalist. And know. that was pretty much Chuck's band. That's it. That's right. And brought the party. Brought the party and brought the house down. I brought saw him one it. time at uh, Kanawa Plaza when they used to perform, but... Um, Friday night. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to stop playing. In front of the bus, he kept playing. He did not want to stop. That's Chuck. You, uh, That's Chuck, Chuck worked. That's Chuck. Chuck worked. Chuck worked it. Yeah. Chuck worked it. But we had a good time, you know, out there, um, you know, playing with Chuck okay. and and uh, and some of the others. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, I've opened for the OJs also. And we did, um, at one point, we did a party. And I say we, I was singing with a group called A Touch of Charm then. Okay. And um, we did Billy Paul's birthday party. Oh, nice. Me and Mrs. Jones, Billy Paul's <laughs> birthday party. We had a ball. We really had a ball, you know. So, you know, we've been, you know, running around doing some things, but it all came around full circle and it all came nice. back to... Um, I think I really think this is what God pretty much saved us for. You know, I I I would imagine not a whole lot of women were too crazy about me and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> I mean, I remember the song and I thought it was nice, but I I think we you know somebody might not have been too wild about this song. When I got a little older, I understood exactly what he was talking they, about. They, they brought it. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> they brought it. And and Billy Paul, he he was um pretty cool guy. Yeah. Okay. Pretty well, cool nice. guy, you know. Nice. So, you know, opening up for a lot of these people, you find, uh, we uh, we open for Frankie Beverly, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's something in, in the industry. You see people one way when you're looking at them in the bright lights mm -hmm. and everything. But when you get a chance to actually be in the mix with them and sometimes, you know, backstage, sit down and talk with them and everything. Sometimes you find out they're really cool people. Sometimes yeah. you find out 
the other side. I just put it out of way. <laughs> he is yeah. he is James Blue Curry. I'm John Dowell, and you're listening to or watching rather. Listen up a minute. We're going to take a break and going to have a short clip of uh, Mr. Curry performing, and we'll be back right after that. James Blue Curry, I'm John Dowell, and this is Listen Up a Minute. Mr. Curry, during the break, uh, we were talking about several things and that you have going on along with your wife and your team, and you mentioned a band and a new record, or well, I guess now, depending on what age group you talk to, CD or new release. <laughs> Eight track? <laughs> Cassette, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, um, we have a, um, we put together a band called Rare Pleasure. Okay. And Rare Pleasure will be um, doing songs, um, I guess, from the 40s, I mean, from the 50s on up to top 40s now. Okay. You know, it's, a, it's a party band, and we'll be doing all kinds of um uh, How'd, all you, kinds of how'd you all form it? Or how'd you just put out a feel for auditions, have people to come in, or were there some people that you worked with in the past? P pretty much. Um, okay. there, there's some people there, with two of the people that we worked with from the past. Okay. And um, we just kind of solicited others, and we just put it together. And um, we're, we're only about maybe a month old, uh -huh. you know, so we kind of, what people might say, we're still in the woodhouse a little bit. Okay. It's about six guys and one female. So that's well, a two full, females, that's yes. a full-fledged band. Full-fledged band. No synthesizers, just real instruments. Yeah, well, and, that's and, nice. and 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 that's and we're nice. doing and we have a horn player. Oh, nice. Yeah, so a lot of bands nowadays, the keyboards are taking up all yeah, that slack. Yeah. But we want to bring the real horn players back. Yeah, so we'll yeah. be doing songs about like Tower Power, stuff like that, to bring oh, nice, the real horn players nice, back. Nice. Yeah, so the band is gonna um the band is gonna go good. We also, my wife and I, we also have a record out. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it on iTunes, um, YouTube, all of the platforms where okay. you can buy music. Um, and it's entitled Walking the Dog. Walking the Dog, an old Rufus Thomas song 
right? But um, we'll be doing a video on it. Hopefully okay. We'll be shooting a video okay. on it pretty soon. And um, I think the clip that you um, um, played mm -hmm. or, or going to play, that's the song. The okay. The Dog. And it's it's a it's a good song. So go to, to iTunes. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it in CD Baby. You can get it there, or you can just go on to uh, YouTube and hear a clip of it and so forth. And then I have a few other uh, okay. videos on YouTube. How'd you come up with the name for the band Rare Pleasure? For the band Rare Pleasure, wow, uh, that's a name that we, my wife and I, I, I say we, my wife and I, we uh, came up with that name few years ago okay and um, we were talking about the the music that we do a lot of people um, don't really listen to some of the old stuff okay. anymore okay. right it's the new stuff the, the jump around stuff and we figured okay if we ever put a band together or a production or anything like that we'll call it rare pleasure because it'll be something rare that people really don't get anymore you know well so my first job out of college, our director, who oversaw our operation, we were talking one day, talking about that music and bands and whatnot. He said, John, if I hear violins, damn it, I want to see violins. That's right. And I've, I've always appreciated That's right. that. And That's right. a lot of bands don't do it for different reasons. I'm guessing money mm -hmm. is the cost now. But I've always had a deep appreciation for actually seeing the trumpet seeing the saxophone and seeing the cello player mm -hmm. and you know seeing the violin you hear violins and you see violins. you see violins you know yeah. you you hear timbales and you see, you see timbales. timbales absolutely and, absolutely. and it's, it's nothing wrong with synthesizers but i just always had a great appreciation for seeing the piano mm -hmm. when you hear the piano and then the organs or the keyboards you see them and you hear them at the same time. It's, and it's actually a different feel. Yeah. Because when you've got that that uh, real musician right there playing that stuff, it's a lot more warmer. It's not it's as electronic, mm -hmm. and it, it's just it's just the warmth that the players bring, you know. Yeah. And and nowadays where they do, um, well I'll say we do because I do it myself sometimes, where we add the. Um, we overdub the voices and stuff right, like that. Right. When you got three or four people in there and they singing those voices, it's powerful. Yeah. It's just a really a wonderful thing. And you talked about some dates that you have coming up. Uh, well, we have a um, we have a concert coming up in June on June the twenty second. And it's a purpose. And and the purpose of it is uh, to promote uh, awareness for dementia, and Alzheimer's, and uh, autism and cancer. Okay. And uh, the cancer, I'm a cancer survivor myself. Oh, I'm nice. Six years. Uh, oh, I'm, congratulations. You know, and it's um, it's great, you know. And I, you know, I, when I found out I had cancer and after I beat it, um, I always said that no matter what, I would let men know, you know, because we don't like to go to the doctor, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you have to get checked. Your colon, your prostate, stuff like that. You have to get checked. You know, if they can find this stuff early, it's always something they can do about it. You know, but if you let it go, we, I think, um, we don't have a fear of going to the doctor. We have a fear of what we might find when we go to the doctor. You I know, that's for me. I tell you, this is prostate cancer you're this talking is about? This is prostate cancer, yes. You know, so... Um, and if and if it's caught early, there's something that it's very can treatable. be done about it. It's Prostate really treatable. cancer is very treatable. Very treatable, you know. And um, I never took a day of chemo. Oh, good, good. I never had to take a day of chemo, good. and they caught it. I'm cancer free. So I would urge all men, you know, have yourself checked. Please have yourself checked at least once a year. Have yourself checked. Years ago, a Louis Farrakhan came to a church on the south side of Richmond to speak, and it was after he had gotten finished his cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman in the audience hanging on every word he said, and just, yeah, yeah, this so, 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 so. And he said, guys, we got to get checked, and we, you have to get prostate exams and so forth and so forth and so on. And I don't know why you don't do it and so forth. And the gentleman in the audience said, we don't play that. And Farrakhan said, yeah, well, you better play that. Mm -hmm. And after that, you didn't hear a word from that man in the audience anymore. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. minister said, we are losing too many of our men, black, white, 
Asian, Latino, Native American, you name it, to a disease that's very treatable. Very treatable. If detected early. And Absolutely. I'll never forget that. That gentleman was just hanging on every word. And he said, we don't play that. And Farrakhan said, yeah, well, you better play that. Mm -hmm. And that shut him up. And he said, we are losing too many of our men and that to is a disease case. that's very, very treatable. That's the case. We are. We're losing a lot of men in that area. You know. So, like I say again, men, have yourself checked. Please have yourself checked. Colon, prostate, you know, um, go to the doctor. You know, if, if, you, if you don't know uh, that you have these kind of diseases, it can, I'll just put it, it can take you out. You know, so please have yourself checked. And, uh, you know, if not for you, for your loved ones. Yes. For yeah. your loved ones, you know, because they, they need you around. You know, I'm glad. I just say I'm glad I did it. Yeah. And for you not to take any chemo, I mean that that in itself is amazing. Absolutely. You know. So again, one more time, go over these dates. These the, this will be June for your the, upcoming shows. This will be June the 22nd in Maria's in downtown Petersburg. June 22nd, uh, it will feature uh, Rare Pleasure Band. That's us, the band, and a group. Uh, let's say from back in the day when we used to do the Follies and mm -hmm. Hey on okay. Supreme Choice. Uh, that was uh, Big Eric and uh, Tony Jefferson and a few of the others, right? Uh, Eric is coming all the way from California to do oh, the nice. show. nice, nice. Right, so um, it's gonna be a really good show. You know, get your tickets early, get your seats early. Uh, I think we have like, what, maybe 130 seats. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the tickets are already already going now and we'll you know, put we'll have that information up on the site for you folks and again it's for Alzheimer's for and Alzheimer's. dementia awareness Alzheimer's dementia and dementia awareness um, autism and cancer. cancer and I mean I don't think you can't come up with a better reason or, or a better cause you know party with the purpose or, or you know for it's all it's nothing wrong with having a good time absolutely but it's a cause it's a cause and absolutely. a real good one all right. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations on being a survivor, not not having to take chemo, and you're here to tell about it and encouraging others to do the same. Absolutely. And absolutely. for you and your wife to take on this task of going, of crisscrossing across the state and several states up and down the East Coast to just share your talent to bring a smile to people's faces that otherwise wouldn't have it and to make people more aware of it, I mean. That's just very commendable. Well, it's 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 um it's something that we love to do, and we wouldn't change it, and we're going to keep on doing it until I can't do it anymore. Well, Blue, <laughs> it's it's been a real pleasure with the Thank S you. and or Z, however you All want right. to do it. Really appreciate it. Thank you Thank for you. joining us, and folks, we will see you next time. Right. For the good Doctor Bert, Pope Matthews, I am John Dial, and this has been Listen Up for Me.